background on myself. Uh, currently, I am a video content strategist. So um, I love helping women, especially in um, entrepreneurship or uh, just minority women in general, to be able to share their message online authentically, right? So I help you build the confidence to do that and also help you structure your content so that it looks great and um, to be able to find it like on YouTube or Instagram or where, wherever it is. But also I have a channel called Janelle Eats on YouTube and I share Filipino food and global food, um, really just to share our culture with the world. And so this is where I learned the book of how to get found on YouTube because um, this is something that I wanted to work on. And, and it was something that bled from my past life, which is the next slide. So in my past life, I was a product marketing manager and I was taking care of a portfolio of mobile app games, right? And so that's where I got my start in, in learning marketing um, and handling multi-million dollar games. Like that takes a lot of responsibility. And so to just kind of get thrown in there, you have to learn a bunch of stuff. Um, so some things that I, I learned was to create like go-to global marketing strategies and um, these are just three that we focused on, which is user acquisition. And so uh, we learned how to like run ads and things like that. Um, app Store optimization. So if you've heard of SEO, which is search engine optimization, App Store optimization is the mobile piece of that. So it's, it's the same thing, it's just on mobile. And this is gonna be very important later. Um, and then cross promotion. So we use our other games. So our other games have what you call equity, right? So you can put, an ad for your game and other games. And it's kind of like this cycle of just cross promoting each other. Okay, and so in that company, I was also the go-to person for app store optimization across all the games and for any A-B testing strategies. So if you don't know what A-B testing is, it's like if you go to a web page, you get one layout and then um, somebody else uh, could get a different layout. And so if you, if you go online, if you're like on Facebook, on, on Instagram, you've, you've been A-B tested and you probably just don't know it, right? It's a way for people to test to see what works well. So like what buttons you end up clicking, like if you end up purchasing something based on a certain layout. And the reason why I brought this up is because this is what helps me now as a uh, video strategist for other businesses and for, for other women. Um, I harness these tools and also in video creation, I harness these tools that I learned and applied it there. So the thing with marketing is all these principles kind of, um, th they apply to a lot of things, right? They even apply to like life. You just have to know how to apply it. Okay. And so basically I left and I traveled and now I do remote work and that's why I'm here. Um, okay, so let's get to it. Video creation breakdown. And so I had done, my first webinar was actually also with you, Anna Marie, and entrepreneurship. And in that first one, I talked a lot about, um, I think it was a structure, like the actual structure of a video. Like you have to have a hook and you have to have like the, the meat, um, like introduction, like all that stuff, right? How to conclude it. But this one, it's more of like, like I said, like how to be found. And so earlier when I mentioned that I did App Store optimization, um, App Store optimization is a way for us to get our games found uh, for like organically, right? So you had to learn how to do keywords. Um, you had to learn like how to put your creatives up so it looks nice and people are more willing to click it. Like that's like stuff that you can manipulate on your end. Um, so the step, the first step that you have to do is you have to do your research. So here's a quote. I like this quote. If I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening the ax. And that is the life of video content creation on my end, right? So there's all these little pieces here where, um, you know, you define your target market, historical data, as in like, look at your historical data based on like what you've done in the past, how those performed, and then see if that's something you should repeat or try something new. Topic brainstorming, competitive analysis, and keyword research. So these are all things that like, if you're just starting out doing video, it, it seems intimidating, but the more you do it, the more it will come naturally to you. This is just me telling you like, if you wanna be successful in being found on YouTube, you have to do your research first. 
before I was super lazy and I was like, I'm just going to create whatever content I want, which is you should, right? You should definitely keep in mind the content that you want to make, but you also have to be smart about it because um, to me, like, what's the point of creating a video if nobody can find it to watch it, right? And especially if you have, like, there's so many entrepreneurs out there with like all these skills and it's just, it can get discouraging if you're not found, right? You're, you're churning out these videos, but you're not being found. Um, so these are the one, two, three, four, five, five things that I want you to start with first. Um, so I'm actually going to go more in depth with the topic brainstorm, competitive analysis, and the keyword research pieces. Um, defining your target market is basically just like know who you're talking to, right? So like if I'm talking to entrepreneur, like an entrepreneur, right? That is very specific. I know what my message is going to be you have a higher success rate of getting the entrepreneur to do something, right? And you're not going to talk to an entrepreneur the same way that you're going to be talking to like your five-year-old brother, right? Like that's just not, it's not going to like, it's not going to relate to your five-year-old brother. And, um, and it's not going to relate to the entrepreneur if you're talking to her like a five-year-old brother. So the next thing, so I'm going to go into just topic brainstorming. And so with one of my clients, I don't know why this just like came up. I just thought of a tree. Right. And so I was helping her um, create like her her content because she was stuck. She's like, I don't know what kind of content to create. Right. But we also want to be smart about it. It's like she. So anyway, so I wanted to create this tree analogy for you and hopefully it sticks. And so you want to start off with your mission. Right. So if you don't have a mission, I like um, to think about it as the why. Right. The mission is your why, like why you're doing what you do. And I think of that as a trunk, as like the base of the tree, right? And then you've got your topics, which is like the branches that come out. And then you've got your specific content, which is the, the leaves, right? So there's so many leaves on a tree. There's less branches on a tree than there are leaves for a typical tree that I'm thinking about. And then you've got like your one trunk, right? And so let me go here. I'm just gonna use my videos as an example. Um, so for Janelle Eats, it is Filipino and global food, but mostly Filipino food. Sometimes they sprinkle like other cultures in there, but my whole mission is to bridge cultural gaps, right? So that is the mission of the channel as a whole. Now there's different topics that fall into that mission, right? And so what I can cover is I want to cover Filipino food. I want to cover traveling for food, right? I, I get to showcase other cultures' foods. And then I can also do restaurant and chef spotlights, right? So these are, this isn't like, these aren't the only topics that I'm going to cover, um, but these definitely help me stay aligned with what kind of content I want to make next, right? And then the specific content are the leaves. So you've got like um, a boodle fight. I did a boodle fight slash Kamayan recipe video that was really popular. Um, and then I can also do food from other countries. And I also have, if you don't know Chef Chrissy, Chef Chrissy Tinsay, uh, she is, she does um, pop-ups, I'm sorry, pop-ups in OC in LA. And so we did a video of her doing her ube recipes, right? So I just break down like my content in that way. And then, so this is like all part of like the initial planning so that you're not always like scrambling for ideas, right? And so now once you've got all that down, the next thing I like to do is competitive analysis. And so the reason why competitive analysis is so important, it's not just for YouTube videos, right? Like this is across all industries. Um, they are your model of success. This is the wheel. You do not want to reinvent the wheel. You want to be, you can stand out without having to reinvent the wheel. And um, the way you stand out is just being you and sharing your personality. So so these are a few people that I follow on YouTube and that I've used either their format, like their video format or their style um, or their content, right, to, to create my own. So I can emulate their video and script format. Um, they can spark content ideas. So things that I never would have thought about to, to cover, um, I will because I decided to watch one of their videos. And then I can replicate their keywords, okay? And this is the most important part and like, if you were lazy with everything else, like I would say like focus on your keywords. And so the reason why I brought up my past life, right? When I was talking about app store optimization is because keywords was such an important piece of that. And, oh, 
I am so glad you're talking about keywords. I just saw that. Yes. Okay. So like keywords, um, I think a lot of people overlook keywords, especially if you're not trained to, to look for them and to use them, even though you use it every day, right? Like when you're looking up something on Netflix, you use keywords. When you look something up on Google, you use keywords. Um, but like, we don't, I don't know, like, I feel like a lot of people who create content do not apply that to their own content, right? So how else are you going to be found? Okay. I'm a little like jittery from the coffee. So I'm like, pardon me if I get louder. Um, keyword research. So, okay. Here's a few tools that I use. Okay. I start here. I put in the brain because you start there, right? Um, you are not unique. I mean, you are unique in your own way, but you're not unique in that there's all these other people in the world that are interested in the same things that you want, right? And so I start with my brain and then I think of like all these ideas, just like we did up in that tree exercise, you think of all the different um, content topics that you could cover. And then you start, you start going in the search engines, you go on YouTube, uh, you go on Google, and then you start looking it up, right? So I'm using the Kamayan feast as an, as an idea, because that's something that I've found success in. Um, so I type in Kamayan, right? And then there's all these things that pop up. You've got Kamayan Feast, Kamayan Buddha Fight, Kamayan Restaurant, like, and then you get, if you scroll down, you'll see the videos that pop up for Kamayan, right? So it says, enjoy amount of Filipino food, Kamayan, Feast Set Sunda. So I think that's supposed to say Sunday something, but learn how to eat a Filipino Kamayan Feast. And it says, Filipino food, we ate the entire Kamayan, a traditional. So you can see these people are actually like inserting keywords, like, the other thing is like, you can't really tell because they're kind of like complete sentences, right? Like you don't want to be weird and robotic about it either. Um, but they kind of like learn to form uh, complete sentences with their keywords. And that's how you want to do it. You don't want to look like you're keyword stuffing, which is what people call it. Like you don't want to just put in like Kamayan, Boodle, rest restaurant, Filipino food. Like that's just strange. And I don't think like, I, th I think people say like these algorithms, they can detect that too like you'd want something that people like real people would actually want to click um and then after that competitive research right and so if you start looking at other food channels i'm just saying food channels because that that was me if you're doing like wellness if you're doing coaching look for other people in your space that are doing the same thing start following them start um consuming their content and then start looking at how they structure their video titles okay because the title is also the most important piece of your YouTube video. Like they, I should have made a slide for that. Did I? No, I didn't. Okay. So just like note this down, right? The strongest, like if you had to rank the keywords that are the most important in helping you rank, the strongest is your title. So whatever you put in your title, it has the strongest um, influence to what you will rank for, for your video. And then you have other things that are, Supposed, they supposedly help your ranking, which is like your subtitles, your tags, you can add tags to your videos. And um, so those are all things that if you have, if you have your, actually, let me go to the next slide. No, let's not, sorry. If you have like the really big keywords, like for example, for this one, it's Kamayan and Boodle Fight. Those are the things you'd want to put in your title first. And then everything else, like right here, it says like restaurant or Filipino food. Like maybe those are things that you can put into your tags, right? So it's kind of like you're feeding that engine, that search engine and telling them like, these are exactly the topics that my video is all about. So, okay, here. So my do and don't for keyword research, right? So don't waste character count on vanity keywords. And I see this with beginner YouTubers or maybe just like YouTubers who haven't done like any marketing really. But I see titles like vlog number 28, my high school friends and homemade boodle fight. Or like if I was going to be all like, like, uh, I don't know, I wanted to call it Janelle's world or something. <laughs> Episode five, getting our hands dirty because we're eating boodle, uh, we're having a boodle fight or something. That's not, if you look at that, like what keywords would be helpful for that, right? Like ideally you'd want to put something like boodle fight in the beginning instead of like in the end, but also like even this one, right? Like who's going to look up Janelle's world? Think about that. Or like, who's going to look up getting their hands dirty? Maybe people will look that up, but you're not going to be relevant. They might be looking up something else, like something weird, nothing about boodle fights. So you want to be a little bit more 
specific, right? So what you do is you do prioritize specific and long tail keywords. And so what is a long tail keyword? So you've got keywords like, like food and then Filipino and then boodle, right? And those are like individual keywords, but what you want is like a specific one, right? Like when we search things up, it's usually like how to cook pancit or, um, you know, how to wrap lumpia or something like that, right? Like you, you want to format your keywords in that way. So you have, when you do long tail keywords, you also have a higher shot of being found because you are more specific, right? You're not trying to like cast a huge ginormous net because there's already so much content out there. If you niche down, which everyone talks about, right? Even with your keywords, you have a higher chance of being found. So if I was gonna title a video, I would call it how to prepare a boodle fight at home or like how to cook a boodle fight at home or a Kamayan feast at home or a boodle fight recipe or Kamayan feast recipe. Kamayan feast recipe, yes. So those are like examples of long tail keywords. And so remember like ladies, I am talking about like food here and stuff just because this is like, my channel so maybe in the end like if you have a certain industry we can like play a game we can like have ideas of like oh how would i title this video right let's see let's see if i'll have time um so this is just to show you like the types of like titles that i put in my own videos so this one was really popular so i called it how to prepare a boodle fight at home and how to eat with your hands like this is like keyword stuffing low key, but I tried to make it like legible, right? And so I use like these spaces to just like stuff these words in. And this one did pretty well. Like, this is where I get a lot of my traffic from on YouTube. And um, it is relevant because now people who are interested in Filipino food in Filipino culture are watching this video. And then they're able to like see my other content, which is also like Filipino. I mean, I get it. Okay, spam masubi, right? Hawaiian food, like it's, there's, there's an overlap though, like I'm getting a lot of like Filipinos from Hawaii and Filipinas from Hawaii watching this content, or really just people who are generally in love with both Hawaiian and Filipino food, right? There's like some overlap there. And so the reason why I brought up Spamasubi is remember when we were talking about our tree and then the branches and then the leaves, right? Um, so this falls, like it's, it's related to Filipino culture in a way that like, it, it kind of like reaches that that audience as well right so you don't have to like put yourself in a box either you can like branch out into other things as long as it's not like you know I'm doing like Filipino food and all of a sudden I like cover dirt bikes and like has nothing to do with my content okay so number two the script so the script is important because you can get your keywords right but if nobody is there and like Staying to watch your videos, which is like watch time, like watch time is very important on YouTube, then it's not going to help you much, right? You have to be able to um, make content that actually sticks for people. And so that's why I say every, every second counts because like people can go to any other channel and watch whatever piece of content they want. There's so much out there. And so that's why it's, it's like, you have to get their attention immediately. And then whatever content you're putting out there, make sure that it's like, you're not just wasting time, right? Like every second is valuable to whoever's watching. So, um, so I emphasize target audience here, right? You wanna have the focused messaging because then you'll get higher conversion. And so that means that if, if you put in the right keywords, if you attract the right person, like they have a higher chance of actually staying and watching your whole video through. Um, you have to have a goal, right? What is the purpose of your content? You might have a topic idea, but have some kind of, of purpose, right? Like why, why am I having them watch this? So when I create my videos, I'm like, okay, the purpose is for somebody like not just to watch a recipe, but also to uh, share my culture. So like sometimes I would add stories or, you know, references to Filipino culture that they otherwise wouldn't have known about. It's really not just about the recipe, right? Um, and then also the structure, you got to structure your script. Otherwise you're just going to, first of all, you're going to drive yourself crazy trying to edit. Right. And second of all, like if you don't structure it, there's some things that you might forget. So, um, it's really important to also structure it in these three pieces, which is the hook, the call to action and relatable content. So the hook is like, I like to have a rule of like the first five seconds, do something interesting or just share something that'll that'll keep them watching, right? And so if you watch other YouTube videos, 
um, so let's say like my food stuff in the first five seconds, I'll show them the finished product because that's what people are there for. Right. If you just kind of start it traditionally, like the very first shot that you filmed, like it might not be as interesting as what it is they came there for. And so what they came to my channel for was like a recipe. Right. And so I want to show you the finished product so that you can stay in the end and see, Oh, how did she do that? Right. Another hook could be like, um, so let's say coaches, right? Like, let's say you were, you're sharing like, um, an inspirational talk, right? Take a bit of that inspirational talk, the one that resonates the most, the one that's like super like, whoa, super cool. And like, put that in the front. Like you're going to notice a lot of YouTube creators are doing that as well. And that helps you stay and be like, oh, what was that reference about? Like, I want to stay and watch and, um, see what the context is. Right. And then uh, relatable content. So this is basically like the meat of your videos, right? So make it, make it exciting, um, make it fun if that's how you want to do it. But really, it's just making it valuable for whoever's watching. Okay, step number three, film and edit. So I made this really short because it is so important, right? To like have good lights, to have good sound, to have amazing content. And right here, I said, relatability is way better than making it pretty. And up here, when I say content is king, the reason why I made this slide super short is because I've noticed that this tends to freeze up a lot of beginner creators, right? Like it's like people want to say, I'm not going to start filming until I have good, a good camera. I'm not going to start filming until I have a set of lights. I'm not going to start filming. Okay. I've been through that. I did that. And it's been like, eventually you get tired of it and you're like, I'm never going to put content out. Let me just use whatever I have. Right. And so like, I mean, don't be filming in like a dark closet, right? Like you have a window or you have some lights, like just use whatever you've got um, for your sound. Like you can start off by like using this so that it's a little bit more concentrated, the sound, or um, just don't be in a super loud area. And also like, if you have any of the smartphones nowadays, like they are really good at capturing sound and uh, film film video yeah so they look really good especially like the iphones like my iphone is really nice sometimes i'm like why do i even have my cameras anymore right um and it really goes down to content because there are some like really grainy videos or even like like super dark or like the sound's not the best but since the content there is valuable people end up watching it because they get exactly what they came for which is a solution right Okay. And oh, that's so yeah, anyway, that's it. And I kept it short because like, I know, well, I don't know, but if you guys have any questions, I want to like start opening it up. Um, but I also do. Okay. So I I'm doing social media success training and I do video production, but we know that <laughs> it's not going to happen at least in the next few weeks. So, um, at least I have like my clients that are online and what I help them with is like just getting that confidence. I'm starting to see that like we hold ourselves back a lot um, as like, you know, Filipinas are just like other Asian American women that were like, Ooh, like it's not the best. It's not perfect. But I'm like, no, just put it out there, put it out there. But I understand like if I take myself back to like the very first time I hit record and the very first time I uploaded a video, I was like numb. Like I was so scared and so afraid, but um, eventually you get like numb to it, like numb to like, Oh, now this is just something that I do every single week. Right. So that is something that I like to help other ladies with and really building consistency because it's not just about confidence, it's consistency. With the, with the consistency you're building, um, you're also building confidence on top of that until like, you know, before you know it, making videos is like, it's like breathing air. <laughs> okay, yay, thank you, Melissa. So anyway, um, these are all the ways you can reach me. And like I mentioned earlier, I just started a mighty, mighty network because like I get all sorts of, of, friends and like family members or just like clients like asking me questions I'm like we should just put this all in one hub and so that's like what the night mighty network is all about and there's some people who like ask the same questions I'm like well like if I just had this in one area like it would be really useful and I think now is a great time to do it that was one of those things that I've been putting off and now I'm like oh I have no choice I kind of have <laughs> to do it now because everyone's online okay so um does anyone have any questions or we can even play that game, that game of like, if I want to make this piece of content and this is the topic, um, what should I title my YouTube video? Anyone? 
any industry. Let's let's play it. Let's play it. Nobody, nobody wants to make a video. Ooh, finance. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Is she able to talk or no? Just okay. Let's have you share, Jen, like your voice. Let me, excuse me, let me figure that out too. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, there Yay. we go. Okay, cool. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was so helpful. Oh, I, of course. I, yeah, I love it. So, um, yeah, for me, um, I thought it was a really great tip that you said about showing the end product like for example you had food and I was like mm -hmm. oh how do you do it when it's intangible <laughs> but then yes. you did you did mention about taking that inspirational story and bringing it to the front um and so I was in, one of the questions I had was I noticed was that um in the key in the title that it and I think this is correct me if I'm wrong but it, mm -hmm. it doesn't I think my mind was getting stuck that I am trying to create like a traditional title like a mm -hmm. blog article but I noticed that you had like like a line and it said like Hawaiian food and then so it was almost like you're kind of sort of combining the title but also inserting some of the keywords would that be the most effective way to do it did I make sense yes, yes. okay yes um and also like keep in mind too like okay like people say like do not keyword stuff and I'm like there's a way for me to kind of keyword stuff a little bit, but for it to also be readable, right? And um, these guys have uh, a char character count. I think it's like 100 characters. And I'm like, okay, well, how much can I fit in that 100 characters, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, well, you wanted to do finance, right? Yeah, or anything, yeah, you know, money related. Okay. That's the thing. Because it's like, oh gosh, when I'm putting some... You know, and I don't know if this is the same as the keywords, but there's an area when I'm in the creator studio mm -hmm. and it's like, there are words that you enter and then you hit a comma. Yes. I'm like, what's the difference between that? Or is it the same thing? Like, I don't even know how to pick those words. Do you, yes. you know what section I'm talking about? Yes. I know what you're okay. talking about. It's the tags section. Thank you. That's it. I was like, yes. what's the word? It's not keyword. Thank right. you. Right. So um, for YouTube, right, they have... So like I mentioned earlier, like your biggest, like your strongest chance of like having, what is, I don't know why I can't think. So whatever you put in the keywords has like the strongest weight to you being searched for that term. That's what it is. Um, the tags are more like secondary, right? It's to mm. support it. Think of it as supporting evidence. <laughs> or Got it. Makes sense. Right. And so. So let's say, okay, so like, let's just say, what's your topic? What's your, what's a video topic that you want to talk about? Okay. So let's use one I did, for example, uh, recently okay. it was about, um, is, does, does, is COVID-19 got, does COVID-19 got you freaking out about the market? Okay. Freaking out about the market. Is that the way you? That is how I titled it, but this is why I'm asking you this question. Cause it's <laughs> yes. probably why it wasn't working. No, it's, it's. Well, here's the other thing too, right? Like I talk about keywords here, but there's a lot of things that are out of our control, um, which is like the algorithm, right? Yeah. Um, but what we do know that is that the more consistent you are, um, the higher chance of YouTube pushing you up, right? Because this isn't the only video that you're going to push out, right? Like you're going to push out other types of finance videos. And if they're all correlating to the same topic, or YouTube's going to see that and be like, okay, the next time somebody searches up a finance topic, you have a higher chance of getting pushed up there because one, you're being consistent and two, your keywords are um, like laser focused. So let me just do Google. Okay. I'm on Google. Um, so COVID-19 freaking out about the market. So let's do like stock market. Like that's one of the, that's one of the keywords that comes up on the top of my head, right? Okay. stock market so I would use like stock market and then like COVID-19 but also what's another way to do to say COVID-19 coronavirus coronavirus right and so I would kind of look up like okay like don't let COVID-19 throw your retirement planning off course like these are like stories that are being pushed out like not necessarily videos but these are the ones that are ranking up right can you guys still see by the yeah, way yeah we can see your screen okay awesome and so like 
you starting to see like, okay, like I'm just picking out keywords like financial planner or like stock market, um, uh, econ, uh, you know, recovery, like things like that. So let's just say, freaking about the market. Let's let's look up coronavirus. Coronavirus. So coronavirus market sell off. So like think about that. That's like a long term keyword, right? Market sell off. Or even that question, like, should you buy stocks right now? Like, that could possibly be a title. Mm. Um, Wall Street, I'm starting to, like, just pick up stuff over here. Like, Wall Street, um, dumping stocks. Like, what I like to do, like, in the very beginning is, like, I just type all these down. And then I see, like, oh, what's, like, a nice... And then I sew it together. Like, oh, what's a nice title that's, like, nice and juicy that, like, people will actually have a high chance of looking up... Um, and so that's how I do that. Let me see. Oh my gosh. Like my, so search. you're researching, you're, you're thinking of the words that maybe people would search, but also combining it with what is, what is popping up kind of like how you were saying, follow these other people for their content. So you're kind of saying, yes. what are the words that it's pretty much telling you what to use and yes. then combining it. Okay. This is exactly. Great. So like this, right? Like market crash. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I hope this isn't like freaking out. I just realized this is like, but like, is it like for educational purposes, right? Like these are the things that are, you can use like market impact, market crash. Like if you didn't start with what you had thought up first, you mm -hmm. wouldn't have found these, right? And this isn't the only thing that you can search up. Like, um, you know, you're the expert in finance, right? Like what else would you look up? Um, Pulling, pulling money out, retirement, um, yeah. you know, things like that. Retirement. All the things that you shouldn't be 